Oh, thank you. Yes. <clears throat> Good evening again. Tonight we are going to hear from a person who studied under Gerard Kuyper at Arizona State University. Oh, Arizona, please. University of Arizona? Yes. Whoa. You know, I'm, Whoa. I'm from Michigan. All right. Ken Burton is a hobbyist astronomer for over 65 years. He is a past president and vice president of the WASP. He is a solar system ambassador for NASA. He has observed 10 total solar eclipses, four annular eclipses, six transits of Mercury, two transits of Venus, 15 lunar eclipses. That count seems out of keeping with the others. He has written over 50 long presentations and over 400 short presentations. And he will tell you about Jan Hort and Gerard Kuiper and their contributions to our understanding of the solar system. Uh, by the way, um, in deference to my friend Gary Ross, an arc minute. If you have 180 degrees, you go from horizon to horizon. A minute, an arc minute is uh, a, six, a 60th of a degree. So you got 180 degrees. A 30 arc minutes is the moon and the sun in the sky. Seconds are 60 seconds for each arc minute, just so that you understand where that's coming from. So Mars, at its very, very largest, was 30 or uh, 29 arc seconds. So Mars is never as big as the moon, so there you go. Mars gets, Mars gets almost to one arc minute. No, it never does. 30, oh, no. 30 seconds of arc. No, tops. no. No, it's like 55 seconds of arc right now. No, it's not. No. 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 All right, here we go. First of all, I'd like to introduce a couple of friends of mine that came especially for this presentation tonight. Mark Luten, uh, Mike Lutenberger, who is a fellow referee, and uh, there are people in the referee things who are interested in astronomy as well. And uh, four and three very old-time friends of mine, Al Linden, Howard Davis, and Jerry Kitchak, who are very, very old and dear friends of mine, as I said. And tonight we're going to discuss two astronomers of significance of the 20th century, Jan Hort and Gerard Kuiper. Uh, John Hendrik Hort was a Dutch astronomer and is generally regarded as one of the leading astronomers of the 20th century. He performed important research in a number of areas, most related, notably on the structure and dynamics of the galactic system. Or also played a critical role in the development of radio astronomy. From that, he founded and later named the later named European Southern Observatory. His work resulted in, uh, in Holland becoming a key center of European and world astronomy. He made large contributions to the understanding of the Milky Way and was a pioneer, pioneer as said, in the field of radio astronomy. He also changed the face of observing techniques. His New York Times obituary called him, quote, one of the century's foremost explorers of the universe, close quote. The European Space Agency described him as, quote, one of the greatest astronomers of the 20th century and stated that he revolutionized astronomy through his groundbreaking discoveries. Uh, quote, in 1955, Ward's name appeared in the Life Magazine's list of the 100 most important living people. He is described as putting the Netherlands in the forefront of post-war astronomy. Amongst his many findings were that the Milky Way galaxy rotates and that the sun is on its outskirts rather than an earlier belief in the center. In 1932, he suggested the possibility of the existence of dark matter and its gravitational attraction causes the clustering of stars and the galaxies and galaxies into collection, collecting strings of galaxies. He is credited with the discovery of the galactic halo, a group of stars orbiting the Milky Way outside the main disk. His work with comets suggested to him that their orbital nature implied that there was a lot more solar system than the region occupied by the planets. The Oort cloud, of course, is named after him, and Oort constants are also a little bit more on that later. Born in a small Dutch town of Franeker, Den Denmark, in, on April 29, 1900, Oort was the second son of William Hendrickson, Hendrickus, and Ruth Hannah Farber. They didn't have pictures. 
who both were from families of the clergy. In fact, his paternal grandfather was a founder of the Liberal Church of Holland and among those who translated the Bible into Dutch. His paternal side produced theologian Abraham Blum, who was a pioneer of modern biblical research. Ort said that his mother, early on in their marriage, kept up her interest in theology, uh, but he recalled that his father was less interested in church matters. In 1903, Ort's parents moved to Oak, to Oates near Leiden, where his a psychiatrist father, Abraham, became a director of the Endicist uh, Psychiatric Clinic. Ort's father was a medical a director of the clinic's sanatorium for nervous illnesses. The family lived in the director's house of a sanatorium near a small forest, which Ort said that the children loved. Ort's younger brother, John, became a professor of plant diseases at the uh, University of Wagon Engine. In addition to John, Ward had two younger sisters and an, an elder brother, however, died of diabetes while still in his school days. Ward attended primary school in Oots Haste uh, and then secondary school in Leiden. In 1917, he went on to study physics at Groningen University. He said that he became interested in science and astronomy during his high school years and that his interest was stimulated by reading Jules Verne. His one concern about studying pure science was that it, quote, might alienate one a bit from people in general, close quote, with the result that, quote, one might not develop the human factor sufficiently, end of quote. He, however, discovered in his later academic positions before him a good deal of opportunity for social content. Or choose Grotingen partly because of the well-known astronomer Jacobus Cornelius Captain, uh, who taught there. Captain carried on important studies of the Milky Way and joined Ort as one of the discoverers of the evidence of galactic rotation. Captain was among, along with Ort, among the first to suggest the existence of dark matter, like I said before, using stellar velocities, and this was in 1922, which Ort carried on upon Captain's death. Ort was conflicted initially as to whether to specialize in physics or astronomy. But by studying work with Captain Ort, settled on astronomy. Quote, it was the personality of Professor Captain which decided me entirely. Uh, he was quite an inspiring teacher, and especially his elementary astronomy lectures were fascinating. End quote. Early in his third year, Ort began working on research with Captain. Later, he recalled that the most important lessons that Captain taught him as an undergraduate were to link interpretations directly to observations and to be very skeptical about speculations and hypotheses. <coughs> he put these lessons into effect throughout his career. Quote, another, uh, another professor, excuse me, another professor at Groningen who had considerable influence on his education was the physicist Fritz Zernike. Zernike, by the way, in 1953 was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics for his invention of the phase contrast microscope. Ort took his doctoral examination in 1921, earning him a doctor, doctor of science degree. Attaining his higher degrees would require several more years of study. Ort was soon appointed uh, as, a, as, um, as uh, an assistant at Groningen at Captain's collab uh, collaborator, as to Captain's collaborator, Peter Johannes von Rinsch, uh, who served as director of, at the uh, Steering Kunig Laboratorium in Groningen and later served for many years as president of the International Ast Astronomical Union, and that was from 1932 to 1958. After a year, Ort left to gain experience in the United States, adding some graduate work at Yale. He served as an assistant to Yale University Observatory Director Frank Schlesinger, who was a pioneer in the use of photographic methods to determine stellar uh, parallaxes and is noted as a great authority in, on fundamental positional astronomy. Also at Yale, Ort was responsible for making observations with the observatory Zenith Telescope. Uh, quote, I worked on the problem of latitude variation, he later recorded, which is quite far away from the studies I had so far been studying. He felt that his experience at Yale was useful, useful as he reflected later and thus became interested in the problems of fundamental astronomy, which certainly influenced his future lectures in life. Personally, quote, some of my very best friends were made in these years at, in New Haven, end of quotes. However, since he felt his work at Yale did not match well with his goals, 
He returned to Langdon in 1924. William de Sitter, the director of Langdon Observatory, offered Ort a position which he quickly accepted. Ort first served as a uh, research assistant, then became conservator in 1926, a lecturer in 1930, and professor extraordinary in 1935. In 1926, he received a doctorate from Groninger on, for his thesis on the properties of high velocity stars. Ort's growing seniority caused him to assume extra administrative tasks. In 1934, when William de Sitter died, and uh, El uh, uh, Edgenar Hertzsprung of Hertzsprung Russell Diagram fame and developer of the Cephe Variable Scale became director of the Leiden Observatory, or quickly became Hertzsprung's deputy. Like his mentor Cap Team, or it was an internationalist uh, when it came to science. And in 1935, his standing in the wider astronom international astronomical community was also underlined with his promotion to General Secretary of the International uh, Astronomical Union. The IAU is considered one of the leading international organizations of astronomers, or it maintained his position until 1948. During World War II, communications with war-torn Holland was, were disrupted so much uh, of the administrative burden uh, was then car carried on by Walter Adams at the Mount Wilson Observatory in the U.S. Or it continued to play a leading role in running the IAU and would serve as its president from 1958 to 1961. Swedish astronomer Bertil Lindblad awarded the Janssen Medal in 1938 and the pre Jules Janssen Award in 1949, the Royal Astronomical Society Gold Medal in 1948, the Bruce Medal in 1954, proposed in 1949 that the rate of rotation of stars in the outer part of the Milky Way decreased the distance from the galactic core. Ort's colleague, William de Setter, first drew attention to Lindblad's work, realizing that Lindblad was correct and that his position, uh, preface, proposition would be dem could be demonstrated observ observationally. From that study, Ort provided two formula that described galactic rotation. The two constants that figured in these formulas are now known as the Ort's constants, which I mentioned, mentioned before. Ort argued that just as the outer planets appear to us to be overtaken and passed by the less distant ones in the solar system, so too with the stars in the galaxy really rotate. To quote Ward, quote, I was finally able to calculate on the basis of the various stellar motions that the sun was about some 30,000 light years from the center of the galaxy and that it took 225 million years to complete the, its orbit. He also showed that stars lying in the outer regions of the galactic disk rotated more slowly than those near the center. The galaxy does not therefore rotate as a uniform whole, but exhibits of what is known as differential rotation. Or it also tackled the problem he had encountered while at Riel, uh, quote, the properties of the so-called high velocity stars, end of quote. He found that these stars displayed a puzzling and unexplained asymmetry as they were traveling toward one hemisphere of the sky. This asymmetry became apparent when the velocity of the stars was greater than about 65 kilometers per second relative to the sun. Solar moving stars did not displace the same behavior. The high velocity stars formed the subject of Ward's doctoral thesis, which he early had defended in Groningen in May of 1926. 1927, Ward married Johanna Maria Menke Grand Van Rogen, um, the event of the university celebration at Ultrich, where Ward's brother was studying biology at the time. Ward and his wife had two sons, Conrad and Abraham, and a daughter, Marichke. Uh, Abraham became a professor of uh, climatology at uh, Princeton University. That happy marriage lasted until Ward's death 65 years later. According to the website of the Leiden University, Ward was very interested in and knowledgeable about art. Uh, when visiting another country, he would always try to take some time off to visit the local museums and exhibitions. <coughs> and in the 50s, served as some, for some years as chairman of the Pictorial Arts Committee of the Leiden Academical uh, Art Center, which had, among other things, the task of organizing uh, expositions. Early discoveries by Ort uh, about the Milky Way overthrew the Cap Team system, named after his mentor, of course, which had envisioned a galaxy that was symmetrical around the sun. As Ort later noted, Cap Team and his co-workers did not realize that the absorption in the galactic plane was as bad as it turned out to be. And to quote, until Ort began his work, he recalled 
quote, the Leiden Observatory had been concentrated entirely on positional astronomy, meridian circle work, and some proper motion work, and there was no astrophysics applied. Also, no structure of the galaxy, no dynamics of the galaxy were mentioned. There was no one else in Leiden who was interested in these problems in which, as he said, I was principally interested. For the first years, I worked more or less by myself on these projects. Professor de Sitter was interested, but his main line of research was celestial mechanics. At that time, the expanding universe was, had moved away from his direct interest, end quote. As the European Space Agency states, or shook the scientific world by demonstrating that the Milky Way rotates like a giant Catherine wheel, um, an older term for a gymnastic cartwheel. He showed that all the stars in the galaxy were, quote, traveling independently through space with those nearer to the center rotating much faster than those farther out. This breakthrough made Oort famous in the world of astronomy, and in the early 1930s, he received a job offers from Harvard and Columbia University, but chose to stay in Leiden, uh, Leiden rather, although he did spend uh, uh, half of 1932 at the Perkins Observatory in Delaware, Ohio, uh, Jim, that was something you mentioned. He did go to Hawaii. Oh, he had mentioned that to me. Okay. In 1934, as earlier stated, Ord became assistant to the director of Leiden Observatory. The next year, as also stated, he became general secretary of the International Astronomical Union, and post he held until 1948. In 1937, he was elected to the Royal Academy. In 1939, he spent half a year in the U.S. and became interested in the Crab Nebula, concluding in a paper written with American uh, astronomer Nicholas Mayhew. Um, yeah, there he is, Mayall, um, Kid Peak Observatory Directory from 1960-1971, and planned out the construction of the Lick 120-inch reflector. That was, it was, that it was a result of a supernova explosion. During the 1939 U.S. visit, Wart and Mayall at the Lick Observatory discussed data on the crab. These sessions led to papers in 1942, although the final manuscript of one listing Mayall and Wart as co-authors never reached Wart. Or, however, had authorized Mayo to publish it if this happened. Or it was aided in his research by Jan Ulis Ludwig um, uh, of, uh, in uh, Ludwig uh, Doivenik, uh, a sinologist at Leiden who had searched the Chinese and Japanese records for original observations of the Nova and produced convincing evidence that the Crab Nebula resulted from a Nova viewed from the Earth in 1054 CE. In part due to the work of du uh, Duvendig, Mayel, and Ort, Walter Bott confidently uh, uh, identified the Crab Nebula as the result of a Type I supernova. In 1940, the Nazis invaded the Netherlands. In 1942, they dismissed the Jewish professors from Leiden and other universities. Uh, open quote, among the professors who were dismissed was a very famous professor of law by the name of Myers. On the day when he got the letter from the authorities that he could no longer teach his classes, the dean of the faculty of law went into his class and delivered a speech in which he stated by, started by saying, quote, I won't talk about his dismissal, and I shall leave the people who did this below us, but will concentrate on the greatness of the man dismissed by our aggressors. This speech made such an impression on all the students that on leaving the auditorium, they sang the national anthem and went on strike. Or it was present for the lecture and was greatly impressed. This occasion formed the beginning in the act of resistance in Holland. The speech by the dean of the faculty of law was widely circulated during the rest of the war by the resistance groups. Or it was in a little group of professors in Leiden who came together regularly to discuss the problems the university faced to the view, in view of the German occupation. Most of the members of this group were put in hostage camps soon after the speech made by, by the speech by Myers. Uh, Ort refused to collaborate with the occupiers, so we went down to live in the country for the rest of the war. Resigning from the Royal Academy, from his professorship, professorial uh, post of life, and from his position as, at the observatory, Ort took his family to Holtzforce, this quiet vi visit village in the province of Gelderland, where he set out the war. In Holtzforce, he began writing a book on stellar dynamics. Before the war was over, Ort started a collaboration with his student, Altric Hein uh, 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 Altric uh, Hendrik van Holt, de Holtz, 
1944 gave de Holst another assignment to review the existing theories on the sources of cosmic radio waves and calculate if spectral lines might exist in the radio spectrum, or had determined that if there was detectable lines in the radio spectrum, as there were absorption emission lines in the optical section of the electromagnetic spectrum, these could be used to investigate utilizing Doppler uh, uh, shifts of the lines, the location and rotation of interstellar gas throughout the galactic system, and not just the very limited region of several thousand light years to which optical observers were restricted by the effects of interstellar absorption. The lines in the radio spectrum might be extremely powerful probes of galactic structure. Orton and his colleagues also made the first investigation of the central region of the galaxy and discovered that the, quote, the 21 centimeter radio emissions passed unabsorbed through the gas cloud that had hidden the center from the optical observation. They found a huge concentration of mass there, later identified as mainly stars, and also discovered that much of the gas in the region was moving rapidly outward away from the center. In June of 1945, after the end of the war, Ort returned to Lyman, took over as director of the observatory, and as said, became full professor of astronomy. He was friendly and courteous in his personal dealings, although some students found him intimidating as he continued to urge them to probe more deeply into a problem. As director of Leiden and leader of the Dutch astronomy, he displayed tenacity in pursuing institutional goals and demonstrating the knack of being able to persuade others of the worth of projects in which he believed. Uh, in 1948, Wharton helped him establish the foundation for radio radiation from the Sun and the Milky Way, also known as the Netherlands Foundation for Radio Astronomy. This organization would eventually put radio astronomy into the, into, onto secure footing in Holland. Observations got underway in 1948 at Kutwich, the site of the Dutch Postal Tele Telephone Company's research station, using salvaged antenna used in the war by the Germans. The work proved agonizingly low, slow, so slow that the result was that the detection of the 21 centimeter radio spectral emission lines was first being made at Harvard by Harold uh, I. Uh, Ewan and, and Edward M. Purcell. He was a Nobel Prize winner in 1952, and this was done in 1951. The line was shortly after detected in Holland, and additional confirmation came about a month later from Wilbur Norman Christensen and J.B. Hindman in Australia, where it visibly searched for an interpretation of growing number of observations. He reckoned that some of the gas being detected in the plane of the galaxy was at a distance of about 25,000 light years, far beyond the reach of optical observations up to that date. Uh, during the immediate post-war period, um, uh, the post -war period, he also led the Dutch group to build a radio telescope at Kutwijk, uh, mentioned earlier, then at, at Dwinjlu, a 25 meter wide and the largest in the world when completed in 1956. He finally, and finally, he developed the Westerbrook synthesis of 12 to 25 meter dishes, a 12 25 meter uh, dishes arranged on an east-west line, 1.5 kilometers long, uh, and that was completed in 1970, which used the 21 centimeter line in, to map the Milky Way, including large class, uh, scale spiral structure, the galactic center, and gas cloud motions, or received help from this product from the Dutch telecommunications company, PTT, which was cited earlier, which he later explained, quote, had under their care all the radar equipment that was left behind by the Germans on the coast of Holland. Specifically, this radar equipment consisted in part of reflecting seven and a half meter aperture telescopes, or pointed out that radio astronomy was really originated with the aid of one of the Kutwijk instruments, uh, where the first map of the galaxy was made. It was written that Oort was probably the first astronomer to realize the importance of radio astronomy in the days before radio telescopes. Oort was one of the few scientists to realize that the, the potential of using radio waves to search the heavens. The theoretical, his theoretical research suggested that vast clouds of hydrogen lingered in the spiral arms of the galaxy. These molecular clouds, he predicted, were the brightest of stars. These predictions were confirmed by measurements made at the new radio telescopes at both Winslow and Westerbork. Or later said that it was uh, Grote Reber's work who conducted the first sky survey in the radio frequency, which first impressed him and convinced him uh, uh, of the unique importance of radio observations for surveying the galaxy. Just before the war, Reber had published a study in galactic radio emissions. 
Ward had come across the paper in a copy of the astrophysical journal smuggled into the country. The great majority of astronomers had paid little heed to Reber's research, but Ward found this news intriguing and later commented, quote, the work of Reber made it quite clear uh, radio astronomy would be a very important tool in investigating the galaxy just because it could investigate the whole disk of the galactic system and be unimpeded by absorption. Or also investigated the source of the light from the Crab Nebula, finding that it was polarized and probably in, it produced by synchrotron radiation, confirming the hypothesis by so Soviet astronomer and astrophysicist Iosif Shelkovsky, uh, the eventual winner of the Lenin Prize in 1960, Bruce Medal in 1972. As a side note, uh, Shelkovsky co-authored the book Intelligent Life in the Universe with Carl Sagan in 1966. With his involvement in radio astronomy, Ward became much more of an observational astronomer than ever before, uh, that th th there ever had been before. In writing on radio astronomy topics, he co-authored papers with one or two co colleagues. He maintained his focus on the structure and dynamics of the galactic system. Ward had long suspected, the Milky Way, suspected that the Milky Way galaxy is a type of spiral. Proving this, however, was quite challenging due to the obstacles caused by interstellar absorption and also the sun's position within the galaxy. In 1951, the American astronomer, William W. Morgan, the Yerkes director, aided by Donald Osterbrook, uh, the astronomy historian, and Stuart Sharpless, uh, couldn't find Stuart Sharpless anyway, Gary, so you just have to be him for tonight. Well, uh, <laughs> that, that other astronomers regarded as compelling evidence of spiral arms within the galactic system by charting the positions of clouds of ionized hydrogen H2 regions, this regions. The solution to the long-standing question of the existence of spirons had still not been resolved, even with the sophisticated star counting techniques pioneered in large part by Captain and other Dutch astronomers. The future would, would clearly lie with radio techniques. Ord, in a joint paper with Van de Holst and C.A. Muller, helped to co both confirm and extend Morgan's arguments on spiral arms through radio observations. A few years later, Ort co-authored with Frank J. Kerr and Gart uh, Westerkoot, uh, The Galactic System as a Spiral Nebula. This paper contained what would become a very famous representation of the distribution of neutral hydrogen in the plane of the galaxy. Ort and these men argued that the sun is on the intersection of an arm of, the, of neutral hydrogen, as anticipated by Ort's a decade earlier radio observations did indeed make it possible. Uh, for astronomers to probe the most distant regions of the galactic system. Or went on to study comets, and he formulated a number of revolutionary hypotheses. He hypothesized that the solar system is surrounded by a massive cloud consisting of billions of comets, many of them long period comets, that originated in a cloud far beyond the orbits of Neptune and Pluto. This cloud is now known, of course, as the Oort Cloud. He also realized that these external comets from beyond Pluto can, quote, become trapped into tighter orbits by Jupiter and become periodic comets like Halley's Comet. According to one source, Or uh, was one of the few people to have, to have seen Halley, uh, Comet Halley on two separate occasions. At the age of 10, he was with his father on the shore of Newdwick, in the Netherlands, when he first saw the comet. And in 1986, 76 years later, when he went up on a plane, and was able to see the famous comet once more. One of Ward's traits, according to one source, was his ability to translate two mathematical papers into physical terms, as exemplified by his translation of the difficult mathematical terms of Lindblad's theory of differential galactic rotation into a physical model. Similarly, he derived the existence of, of the comet cloud on the outskirts of the solar system from the observations using mathematics needed in dynamics, but when deduced the origin of this cloud using general physical arguments and a minimum of mathematics. This Oort cloud, named for him, is sometimes, oops, sorry. Let's do that again. Sometimes it jumps. This uh, Oort, um, this Oort cloud, named after him, is sometimes called the OPIC Oort cloud. Actually, a theoretical cloud of predominantly icy planetesimals proposed to surround the sun at distances ranging from 50,000 to 200,000 astronomical units. That's 0.8 to 3.2 light years. It is divided into two regions, a disc-shaped inner Oort cloud, or Hill's cloud, both, and a spherical outer Oort cloud. Both regions lie beyond the heliosphere 
and in interstellar space. The Kuiper Belt and the scattered and the scattered gate, the other two reservoirs of Trinity Pages, are less than one thousandths as far from the sun as the Oort cloud. The outer limit of the Oort cloud <laughs> defines the cosmological, uh, uh, excuse me, cosmographical boundary of the uh, solar system and extent of the sun's hills sphere. The outer Oort cloud is only loosely bound to the solar system and thus is easily affected by the gravitational pull both of passing stars and the Milky Way itself. These forces occasionally dislodge comets from their orbits within the cloud and send them toward the inner solar system. Based on their orbits, most of the short period comets may come from the scattered disk, but some may still have originated from the Oort cloud. Astronomers conjecture that the matter composing the Oort cloud formed closer to the sun and was scattered far into space by the gravitational effects of the giant planets early in the solar system's evolution. Although no confirmed direct observations of the Oort cloud have been made, it may be the source of all long uh, period and Halley-type comets uh, entering the inner solar system, and many of the centaurs and, and Jupiter family comets as well. In 1951, Orton and his wife spent several months in Princeton and Pasadena, Pasadena uh, an interlude that led to uh, a paper by Orton and Lyman Spitzer, inventor of the stellar radio or plasma device, and is the namesake of the Spitzer Space Telescope, on the acceleration of interstellar clouds by O type um, stars. He went on to study high velocity clouds. Or as director of Lightning Observatory until 1970, after his retirement, he wrote a comprehensive articles on the Galactic Center and on superclusters, published several papers um, on the quasar absorption lines supported by nuclear physicist Yakov Zeldinov, uh, 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 Zeldovich's pancake model of the universe. He also continued researching the Milky Way and other galaxies and their distribution until shortly before his death at 92. In addition to his efforts in establishing the Netherlands at the forefront of radio astronomy, he secured it by securing a powerful radio telescope, but was also eager to, to secure access to large optical telescopes for Dutch astronomers. The idea for which became the European Southern Observatory was sparked by the discussions between Walter Bott one of the outstanding observational astronomers of his time and very experienced in the use of large telescopes. And Ort, Bod, although based at Mount uh, Wilson in California, very much viewed himself as a European and uh, he often gave advice to Ort as Ort worked hard and adroitly with various international partners to fashion an observatory to be funded by the governments of a number of European nations. Planning got seriously underway after work called the meeting of the leading <coughs> European astronomers at Groninger in 1953. It still took over a decade of demanding diplomacy to reach an agreement between the Netherlands, France, the Federal Republic of uh, Germany, and Sweden, uh, which was also Belgium and Denmark, would join a few years later and to establish the European Southern Observatory. In 1966, the first ESO telescope at La Silla site in Chile began operating. The observatory was dedicated on La Silla in Chile in 1969 and went into operations initially with middle-sized telescopes with larger ones of <coughs> Galaxies in Retirement. In his inaugural lecture as a professor at Leiden in 1935, Ward had discussed the origin of the and evolution of the universe and galaxies. He also was also deeply interested throughout his career in clues offered by observations of other galaxies and interpreting his own our own galaxy but he began to regularly write scientific papers on other galaxies only in the 1950s. A particular interest to him were issues stru of structure that might, significant, might be significant on a cosmological scale, especially the development of superclusters and galaxies. When he retired in 1970, he chose to speak at his 70th birthday symposium on galaxies in the universe. With retirement, he was defeated free of administrative duties, but he continued to be very active in research well into his 80s. And the last piece he wrote for the Astronomical Journal was published a year before he died. Uh, and he won numerous prestigious uh, prizes and awards, as well as honorary doctorates from Brussels, Cambridge, Harvard, Oxford, Turin, and others. Jan Ort died in Leyden on November uh, 5th, 1992, at the age of 92. He died as a result of complications from a broken hip. Quote, like a modern Copernicus, Ort showed that our position in, the, in nature's grand scheme was not so special, said Dr. Seth Shostak, an astronomer at the uh, SETI Institute in Mountain View, California, 
who worked for many years at the University of Groningen. He was the father of Dutch astronomy, Dr. Van Alden uh, said of Dr. Ort, and we all thank our jobs to him. Uh, colleagues remember him as a tall, lean, portly man with a gentle manner, and Gino Manray was survived by his wife and former, the former Marina, uh, Johanna Marina Grandjojan, and poet, and poet, and two sons, Conrad and Raybrain, and daughter Meiji, who we sent him, and several grandchildren and great grandchildren. Aside from the Oort cloud, the asteroid 1691 Oort was named for him. And that is the story of John Oort. Let's move into the next uh, discussion, which is about uh, Jared P. Kuiper. Originally named Gerrit Pieter Kuiper, born on December the 5th, 1905, at Heronscarfsville, Netherlands. I'll give you a little bit of a, a story about uh, Dr. Kuiper, who I, who I met while I was in Arizona. Although he was a strict disciplinarian for both students and employees, he not generally liked by those <coughs> with whom he worked, my experience with him was very positive. I met him in 19, I'm going to go over here. I met him in, in around 1964 when I first got to, to Arizona. Took a couple of courses from assistant professors and such. And it was obvious that I knew what I was doing because I had already been studying astronomy by that time for 12 years. So I knew my stuff somewhat and was annoying to many of my professors. But, uh, <laughs> but what happened was is I got a chance to go over to the Lunar Planetary Lab to meet Dr. Kuiper, who uh, taught, uh, was a professor at part time, didn't do a lot of professor, but mostly running the LPL. But I, mean, I got a relationship with him. He was a, a very um, a tough guy, but he was a nice man, and he appreciated the interest that I had in astronomy. In the 1965, um, I had to declare my major, and it was a toss up between astrophysics and, and business. And uh, I went to Dr. Kuiper just because I needed to talk to him and find out what he thought. And he said, Mr. Burton, he said, we would love to have you in our, our science. He says, however, let me give you two names, Arthur C. Clarke and Fred Hoyle. And I said, who are they? Well, they were authors. He said, those are the only two astronomers that I know that ever made any money. <laughs> <laughs> and I said to him, well, um, and he was a very, very intense guy and would research things. He knew a little bit about me, knew my family and such. He says, you know, I'm a senior professor here. And I run the Lunar Planetary Lab, but I make $23,000 a year. How much did your dad make last year as an insurance man? And I gave him the figure, which was well over six figures. He said, let me give you a little piece of advice. He said, what you need to do is you need to go over to the School of Business and do what he did. He says, and the reason is because if you don't do that, the best you can be is a head of astronomy at a, professor, at a, a school, or you can become a member of NASA, which was in its infancy at the time pretty much. Um, he says, but every other astronomer is waiting for 10 minutes on the top of a mountaintop to use a telescope. He says, keep astronomy as an avocation. He says, if you make the money that you're able to make in the business world, you'll be able to buy any telescope you want. Join any club that you can. He says, you can teach if you want to, which I'm doing. You can take trips to see eclipses and all those other things. And I said to him, you know, doctor, he says, I love astronomy, but I think you got it right called over to the lead, uh, lead, uh, head of the department at the business college. He sent me over there with a recommendation. I sat down with him and he came and went into finance. And that's just my story with, with, uh, with Dr. Kuiper. He was a very, very genuine man, but really a tough son of a bitch. What a man. <laughs> All right, moving on. Peter, uh, Gerard Peter Kuiper was born on December the 7th, 1905 at Hartz Karstel in the Netherlands. He was a Dutch-American astronomer, planetary scientist, selenographer, author, and professor. Kuiper was considered by many to be the father of modern planetary science. Kuiper was the son of a tailor in the village of Herenstarpsel in, in North Holland and had an early interest in astronomy. He had extraordinarily sharp eyesight, allowing him to see magnitude 7.5 stars with the naked eye, about four times fainter than visible to normal eyes. Kuiper studied the planets at the time when there were scarcely of interest to other astronomers, said Bill McKinnon, a co-investigator on the New Horizons mission to explore the Kuiper Belt, a region of space now named in his honor. 
quote, but with new telescopes and instrumentation, he showed that there were great things to discover, which is as true today as it was then, end of quote. He went on to study at Leiden University in 1924, where at the time a very large number of astronomers had congregated. He befriended fellow students Bart Bach and Peter, Peter uh, Osterhoff, and was taught by Enger Hertzbrenn, the HR diagram, Antoine Penicot, the founder of astrophysics as a separate discipline and author of the history of astronomy, who is also a well-known Marxist, William de Sitter, Jan Wojtler, Jan Ort, and phys physicist Paul Ehrenfest, who made major contributions to the field of statistical mechanics and relations with quantum mechanics, including the theory of phase transition and the uh, Ehrenfest theorem. He received his a Bachelor of Science in Astronomy in 1927, continued straight on with his graduate studies, and finished uh, his doctoral thesis on binary stars with Hertzsprung in 1933, and left Denmark for the US later that year. He traveled to California to become a fellow under Robert Grant Aiken, Aitken, collaborator of Double Stars and winner of the Bruce Medal in 1926 at the Lick Observatory. In 1935, he went to work at Harvard College Observatory before he met Sarah Parker Fuller, Parker Fuller, whom he married in June 20th, 1936. Although he had planned to move to Java, Java to work at the Bosch's Observatory, he took a position at the Yerkes Observatory of the University of Chicago and became an American citizen in 1937. In 1949, Kuiper initiated the Yerkes McDonald Asteroid Survey, and that was done from 1950 to 1952 and completed time. After conducting research in stellar astronomy, Kuiper shifted his focus to planetary research in the 1940s. In 1944, he was able to confirm the presence of the methane atmosphere around Saturn's moon Titan. In 1947, he predicted correctly that the carbon dioxide is a major component in the atmosphere of Mars, and he also correctly predicted that the rings of Saturn were composed of particles of ice. The same year, he discovered the fifth moon of Uranus, uh, Miranda, and in 1949, he discovered the second moon of Neptune, Neri. Uh, in 1950, he said he obtained the first reliable measurement of the visible diameter of Pluto. In, 1950, uh, in, in uh, 1956, he proved that Mars' polar ice caps were composed of frozen water, not the carbon dioxide as had been previously assumed. In Kuiper, in 1964, prediction of what the surface of the moon would be like to walk on, it would be like crunchy snow, he said, was verified by, uh, in 1969, by, uh, by uh, Neil Armstrong. Kuiper also pioneered airborne infrared observing using a Con uh, Convair 19 990 aircraft in the 1960s. Kuiper spent most of his career at the University of Chicago, but moved to two centers in 1960 to found the Lunar, Lunar and Planetary Laboratory at the University of Arizona. One of the three buildings in Arizona that makes up the LPL is named in his honor. In the 1960s, Kuiper helped identify landing sites on the moon for the Apollo program. His earlier work on the moon included a secret project called A-119, the secret Air Force plan to detonate a nuclear warhead on the moon. Another scientist in the group was Carl Sagan, who was Kuiper's PhD student at the time of the project. Kuiper discovered several binary stars which received Kuiper numbers to identify them, such as KUI 79, for example. Kuiper died in 1973 while on vacation with his wife in Mexico uh, of a heart attack. In 1951, Kuiper was awarded the pre Jules Janssen uh, of the Jules Dan the, the pre Jules Janssen of the Astronomical Society of France. That was established in 1897, and he won it in 1947. In 1959, Kuiper won the Henry Russell Norris lectureship of the American Astronomical Union. That's around 19, uh, uh, or what wanted, uh, a rather, uh, uh, Astronomical Society. By the way, the Russell is the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, by the way. Um, uh, by the way, Ort won this in 1951, by the way. 1971, uh, Kuiper received the Kepler Gold Medal from the American Association for the Advancement of Science and the Franklin Institute. 
Many objects and places bear his name. The minor planet, like I said before, 1776 Kuiper. There's three craters, a Mercury crater, a lunar crater, and a Martian crater. Uh, we have the, uh, uh, the Kuiper scarp um, in Antarctica and the now decommissioned, um, the decommissioned uh, Kuiper Airborne Observatory. Astronomers left to, the, to a region of minor planets. Uh, the, astronomers refer to the region of minor planets beyond Neptune as the Kuiper Belt. Since Kuiper had suggested that such small planets and comets may have formed there, however, he believed that such objects would have been swept clear of planetary gravitational perturbations so that none or few would exist there today. The Kuiper Belt, uh, by the way, he didn't even, it was named for him, but he, he never. Uh, new with the name, he didn't develop it or anything like it, but it's called the Edgeworth Kuiper Belt. is a circumstellar disk in the outer in the outer solar system, extending from the orbit of Neptune at 30 astronomical units to approximately 50 astronomical units from the Sun. It is similar to the asteroid belt, but is far larger, 20 times as wide and 20 to 200 times as massive. Like the asteroid belt, it consists mainly of small bodies or remnants from when the solar system was formed. While many asteroids are composed primarily of rock and metal, most Kuiper Belt objects are composed largely of frozen volatiles, termed ices, such as methane, ammonia, and water. The Kuiper Belt is home to three officially recognized dwarf planets, Pluto, Humea, and Makimaki. Some of the uh, solar system's moons, such as Neptune's Triton and Saturn's Phoebe, may have originated in the region. Although the Kuiper Belt was named for him, he did not predict its existence, as I said. In 1992, Albion was discovered, the first Kuiper Belt object since Pluto and Charon. Since its discovery, the number of known KBOs has increased to over 1,000, and more than 100,000 KBOs over 62 miles in diameter are thought to exist. Um, the Kuiper Belt was initially thought to be the main repository for periodic comets, those with orbits lasting less than 200 years. Studies since the mid-90s have shown that the belt is dynamically stable and that the comet's true place of origin is the scattered disk, a dynamically active zone created by the outward motion of Neptune some 4.5 billion years ago. Scattered disk objects such as Eris have extremely eccentric orbits which take them as far as away as 100 astronomical meters from the sun. The Kuiper Prize, named in his honor, is the most distinguished award given by American Astronomical Society's Division of Planetary Scientists, an International Society of Professional Planetary Scientists. The prize recognizes outstanding contributions to planetary science and is awarded annually to scientists who achieve lifetime achievements, have most advanced our understanding of planetary systems. Winners of this uh, award include Eugene Shoemaker in 1984, by the way, Shoemaker, Shoemaker Levy, the comet that collided with Jupiter is named for uh, Eugene Shoemaker. Uh, Fred Whipple, uh, 1985, uh, the Derby Snowball uh, uh, comet name. Uh, James Van Allen, 1994, uh, the Van Allen belt, the radiation belt around the Earth was named for him, and Carl Sagan in 1998. And thus is the story of Jan Ward and Gerald Kuiper. Are there any questions?
All right, we'll be passing out the pop quiz paper shortly. Yes, bring them in. No. Uh, if uh, if you guys don't have a bedtime, 